one. Hey, let me tell you about the sound of my bass. Um, well, before I get started, for all of you perfect pitch Nazis out there, let me tune it. <laughs> okay. Okay. One hi. idea the guy that runs um, the channel 65 Drums, um, he always starts out with the topic, then he plays the intro. You know? It's a. <laughs> that could work. That could. That yeah. could work. But anyway, let's uh, let's just do this. So anyway, <clears throat> that was Nick. <laughs> Nick Bruno. Uh, this is a. This is. I don't think I've ever really done anything on this bass on this channel. So. This is the bass that I usually play with Dobodas because it's really easy to play. This is as I told you earlier. My basses are not normal. This bass was actually had a new. I had a new neck put on for my regular sized hands because most bass players have what are called alien fingers. They're hu these huge fingers, and you can play amazing stuff with these big fingers. And of course, they're usually the best bass players. But the, you see, the strings are like this far apart, and uh, well, why make it hard on myself? So I had a new neck built, and. Uh, Thanks to the Pullman team, Michael Kramer, uh, president of Pullman, made me this wonderful neck, sent it to me, and then I had it finished here in Sarasota. Uh, but uh, this neck makes it really, really easy to play this bass, because this, this bass is really a killer bass. It's, a, it's a, called a Pullman bass. But what I did is I linked it up to this Boss ME80 processor right here, and uh, this processor was picked up the day before the video that went viral with the cigar box bass. And uh, anyway, uh, I really didn't know much about it, still really don't, but I found a sound I like. And I programmed it into memory, and I just use it. So, uh, because uh, and when I'm, we're recording with Davidas, he has another bass that is on his synthesizer that I'm playing along with. So. Uh, Anyway, but here, here's the sound that I get on this. This is just the bass acoustically. Oh, by the way, I'm not a trained bass player. Um, never went to college on this. Just started with fretless in 1979. And uh, this is just a giant fretless bass to make. So uh, let me turn the volume up. There we go. Now, here's my sound. see some more videos coming out with me playing distortion on this but this sound has a little bit of distortion in it so when I play real hard you can hear that distortion out of this sound but I gotta play it really hard where most basses when you play them really hard they get bassier while this one gets distorted this way it doesn't interfere with the low frequencies coming from this the keyboards because in my opinion, the keyboard bass should be the lowest frequency on the uh, on, on our videos. Also, now that we've introduced this electronic drum set, this is a Roland TD K TD30KV, as in Victor, 
and uh, and soon to be upgraded to a TD50, and this belongs to Nick. So he's got some presets on here that go really, really low, down as low as, uh, for you uh, numbers guys, 20 hertz or even lower. Yeah, that's um, 16 so, hertz. So anyway, um, the, bit, the sound I've got on this bass is mostly, it peaks out in the low mid-range about 100, and, 100 hertz to 120, where most basses are giving you about 80 hertz. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of a numbers guy, but uh, again, I'm not a real upright player, even though I do play classical music, I sight read and do all that good stuff. Uh, to me, this is just, this is, I don't know, this is kind of like an extension of my hand now. I've had this bass for maybe 20 years, and uh, I just love it. It's a, it's a cool bass. <laughs> Forgot how to shut off the effects. Um, I think this is how we do it. Let's see. Is that no? That's not how we do it. Um, um, this one. Is that it? I don't know. I, I'll go figure. Anyway, um, <laughs> I really don't know how to shut. I know how to turn the volume down. <laughs> That's funny. Oh well, I guess we're going to be stuck with this. Oh, here, let me just shut the shut the volume off. Shut right? the volume. Um, now, let's let the sound adjust a little bit on my iPhone. All right. Yeah, so uh, some of you upright players, again, this is a pizzicato bass. I play lots of bow stuff, but the whole purpose of this bass is to, so I can play pizzicato. And uh, because it is a carved bass, this whole entire thing was carved out of a tree. Uh, here's the, you know, they actually had a piece of a tree, uh, I think it was a birch tree or something, it uh, came out of the forest in Germany, and it was approximately a, a slice about this big, and it was a huge, you know, thing, maybe five, four feet in circumference, and uh, then they would carve out, they would just start honing out the, you know, the inside of this thing, and then over time, they would slowly carve this thing until you had a piece of wood that's about a quarter of an inch thick, maybe less, maybe an eighth of an inch. And I'm, again, I'm not really, I wasn't too up on things when I first got this. And uh, uh, it had a knot in it somewhere. Yeah, right down here, there's some knots. I went, oh, look at that, a knot. And I pressed on it, right down there, and my finger went right through the base. Uh, <laughs> so this is not a base that you can stand on. Again, this is a carved piece of wood and uh, is a wonderful bassist named John Patitucci. He's got, or had, I believe this same exact bass called a Verona model. And again, the company's called Pullman. Um, again, wonderful carved instrument. And then on the bass, to get the sound, I have a very special pickup. This is called a Fishman Full Circle pickup. Let me move that out of the way. Yeah, this is this is the pickup right here, and what I did is in this foot, this this is called a David Gage bass bridge. Very very expensive bridge. Uh, came with the bass when I got it. Uh, you don't want to know what I paid for this thing. Anyway, this bridge has a really big screw in it that is adjustable, and uh, so what I did is I replaced the nylon screw that was in there with a piece of metal. And it's a large piece of metal, and then I drilled inside the piece of metal, or had a machine shop do that. And so this is a very high, high intensity uh, pickup. And uh, oh, I know how to how to turn the the effect off. All I have to do is just pull the plug out and plug the base in direct. There we go. So anyway, here's how the how the pickup works all by itself, and this is uh, this is just turned up a little bit. Uh, really, this is flat. Very even sound. You know, again, carved bass, much more sensitive, gets a lot more frequency. Now this bass doesn't really feed back too much. You really got to push it hard. To get it to feed back. It's really something. I mean, I can, I can just.
laid this base down, it won't feed back or anything, and just keep it turned on, then just pick it up and, and go at it. But uh, this base allows me to do my hybrid style of slapping. You know, when you see me playing, you see my arms going up off the base. Well, I'm not really slapping it. I'm, you know, if you have a nice base and you want to learn how to slap, all you have to do is move your G-string over, give yourself a spot, and you land your fingers right on that spot, and it gives you a slap. My hands do not hit the strings. You know, I'm not like I'm not doing that because this is a really nice base, and I don't want to don't want to beat it too bad. So it looks like I'm beating it. So I do. I, I've developed a slap style that uses my thumb. So my thumb's the only thing slapping this bass. So here's my slap. But again, because I got this pickup in here and the action's super low, this is really low action. It's uh, maybe a quarter of an inch on, uh, on most of the bass. You know, a lot of some slappers have their action about a half inch off. I don't know how they do it. But I do have very heavy, heavy callus fingers because these strings are metal strings. These are made for bowing, uh, made by the super sensitive string company right here in Sarasota, as a matter of fact. And uh, these are really, really good strings. So uh, anyway, contact me if you want any more information. I'll give you their, their stuff. But uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I got into slapping when I heard Lee Rocker. So I, I uh, had somebody come up to me who was just learning bass, wanted me to teach him how to slap. And now I'm going into the slap from the sound. Anyway, so he wanted me to teach him how to slap. And I'd never slapped bass in my life. So I, he gave me this Lee Rocker video. I watched it for uh, 20 minutes, I guess. Uh, a couple days later, played a gig, concert in front of about 1,500 people. And the band I was with, which did multiple, various kinds of music, it was a show, uh, they did uh, this song called Alabama Jubilee. And uh, I was with violin, a fiddle player and, and piano and a great drummer. And uh, anyway, Kenny Loomer on drums, Brian Girl on piano, and Lenny Ski on the fiddle. Unbelievable thing. And, it's, and uh, so we, we played this song, and then they just pointed to me, do a bass solo. And I said, ooh, I can try that slap thing out. So I started playing. Right about there, my whole entire arm was in pain and I had just started the solo. I had to play through that whole entire chorus and by the time I'm done, I'm playing. Anyway, I played the whole entire solo and when I was done, I got a standing ovation and all I did was play. That's all I played. But I was slapping. Um, life changing, just a life changing moment. I said, I got to learn this stuff because never in my life have I ever got a standing ovation from a bass solo. So uh, that was a long time ago. It was maybe 15 years ago. So uh, I've been developing this style, and now when I play with Dovidas, um, I'll do funk tunes. a drummer because that that's like a yeah and uh, of course everyone plays funk on their upright basses right um, well I do I, I'll t I, uh, for a long time ago, I started to, I'd have, one day I had my upright in the car, didn't want it to get hot, so I brought it into my gig with a, a band doing covers. And uh, so I had it sitting there and the singer went, 
you going to play that? And I said, yeah, can I try it the first set? And she went, sure. So I tried it the first set. I was still playing it at the end of the night. And uh, I felt great. And everyone loved it. So uh, I now play this bass on most gigs. And it's just a lot of fun. And plus, uh, I take this bass to Nashville. Just the bass, no chord, bow. And go sit in with some songwriters and make lots of friends with this thing. Because, again, it's a really cool bass. But, um, yeah, I love playing funk. sorts of different kinds of music in this bass. Um, the first song I played with uh, Dovidas uh, for the Blues Challenge about three years ago was called uh, Going Away to Leave and this bass was built for that because it just starts off in slap on the bass what does sets the audience up it just gets people moving you know and also you don't really need a drummer you know, a lot of these bands now they get a guy with a bass drum <laughs> playing guitar too it's drumming away go boom 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 yeah who needs a drummer anymore <laughs> <laughs> anyway um that says the drummer uh, yeah so uh yeah um anyway yeah so this is a uh, this type of uh, slapping or bass playing, I don't know what you want to call it, plucking. Uh, Elvis Presley was, I guess, one of the guys who had uh, Bill Black on the bass, and Bill was all over this type of bass, except again, he had his strings like you know that far off the neck, and he put his whole hand under it and pull out, because they didn't really have big amplifiers back then. So anyway, so I cheat all the way. Um, makes things a lot easier. Um, but anyway, uh, speaking of making things easier, whenever you see me doing um, a solo on one of these videos, like uh, let's say when I played Europa, I'd never played that song, Melody, in my life. And, uh, and again, the day I had that, that uh, whatever it was called, the uh, cigar box. I'd never played that cigar box until maybe two songs before that, plus it was too short. You know, see how tall this bass is? Well, this part of the neck on that cigar box was right there. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I know where all the notes are on this bass, based off of height, you know. So anyway, it was really difficult. Then, I played just recently, uh, I sat in with Dovidas and we pl someone requested Black Magic Woman. Well, I know what it sounds like because I've heard it for the last gazillion years, but I've never played it. So, you know, I, uh, I literally had to find the starting note and... Uh, and then I'm hearing the intervals in my head. this line on this bass. Yeah, I just can't. And uh, so you're going to see that on that video. Uh, but I did so much. But it was it was fun. I should have used the bow. Maybe next time. Someone requests that again. I will try it on the bow. Unpracticed. So uh, you just got to kind of deal with it. So uh, but yeah, but this bass is just so much fun. Again, it's, it has a great sound. <laughs> sound like a like most basses this sounds more like a cello uh, back in the 60s a gentleman named Glenn Moore owned this bass he bought it new 1965 
he was with a band called Oregon. And um, if you're watching this video, I don't know if you've ever heard of Oregon. Oregon was a really cool band. Uh, Paul McCandless, I think Ralph Towner was in it. And uh, uh, it morphed, I guess, into the Paul Winter Consort. Anyway, this bass was uh, on several of their first CDs. And there was a song called Icarus. And uh, Icarus was a really cool song that was in a lot of, uh, there's a lot of background music and a lot of uh, various TV and uh, documentary things. But it had a cello playing this, uh, this melody. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to plug back in the sound. And uh, because I love this sound. I don't know what key the song was in, but this song Icarus goes like this. It's just a beautiful song. Yeah. <laughs> so on and uh but this this bass was playing in the background you know like a too high for me to sing so um, but yeah this bass was uh, it, it's got a really cool cool track record and then uh, next player to own it uh, Mike Bokikio who I got it from he actually recorded with the great Jerry Mulligan uh, jazz baritone sax player and uh, he used this for you know straight ahead jazz and uh, he was all over it again that's with the old neck and uh, anyway but yeah, this bass is really cool. It's a very well-known bass, and I'm so happy that I'm able to give it life, and uh, especially on YouTube. I want, I want everyone to hear how wonderful this bass sounds, and um, I hope that you all just you know, pay attention to, to what I'm playing, and uh, forgive me if you hear something you don't like, because <laughs> what I'm doing is not rehearsed. It's just not my thing. See y'all later.